What is up awesome peeps? Brent McCluskey here with Electrified Views and today we are reviewing the Green Bike Electric Motion Big Dog Extreme Fat Tire Folding Electric Bike. A lot of monikers in there, a lot of stuff to describe this bike. This is a very cool, kind of like urban street version of a folder, full suspension, really sweet ride. We're gonna dive into this, but first let's roll the B-roll. Awesome peeps. Again, this is the Green Bike Electric Motion Big Dog Extreme Fat Tire Folding Electric Bike. Uh, this thing starts for $1,899, $1,899 USD. So that's going to be kind of the top end of the affordable price range. Not super affordable, not super expensive in the grand scale of the electric bike kind of price range, right? This company, Green Bike Electric Motion, we have reviewed several products from them. Uh, one thing that I like about this company a lot is they offer a one year comprehensive warranty, which is pretty great, especially for direct order bikes. It just gives you like a good feeling of kind of comfort and security. Something goes wrong, you got one year, the battery dies, weirds out on you, electrical system fails for whatever reason, motor dies out, which is really unlikely, but let's just say it happens. They'll send you out a free part, right? They'll get it fixed for you one year. That's a pretty, pretty long time. So I, I really like that. These guys also offer free shipping which is great, that's a nice little bit of savings. So basically the price is $18.99 out the door, not an extra 300 for shipping and handling on all that stuff. It's just kind of like the price is what you see what you get, which is nice. I mean, sometimes companies, they add shipping afterwards and it just feels kind of like a hidden fee. It's not necessarily a hidden fee. It's just kind of like a, it's like a surprise sometimes. So that's not the case with Green Bike Electric Motion, which is great. Um, this comes in one frame size. It does have quite a few different color options so you can kind of customize it to the way that you like. What's cool about this, you can probably see just from the geometry here, look at the, uh, the saddle, look at the handlebars, they're pretty much flat. This is a compact frame for sure, but it rides kind of like a full-size electric bike. And one of the main reasons is typically on folders, you have a telescoping stem, the handlebars come way up, it raises your riding posture, makes it more relaxed. This is more aggressive, more down, um, yeah, that means you have a more efficient uh, pedal stroke. It means that you're gonna need more aerodynamic and it's just, it gives you more of that full frame feel. So that's kind of a, a cool thing. You also can adjust the handlebars if you want to. You can raise them a little bit or you can lower them right there. But let's dive into the specs. We'll start back here on the back of the Big Dog Extreme. This is gonna be a 750 watt Bafeng hub motor. One of my favorite motors here. It's just kind of a sweet spot, man. This motor is just not, it's not too powerful where it just, just destroys the battery but it's not like, you know, 250 watts where you don't have, you just don't feel like you have a lot of power. 750 watts is like right in the middle where you have a lot of power with this. I think it's about 1200 watts of peak power, 80 newton meters of torque. It's a very peppy motor. Um, and they're just great, man. The Bethang motors are just fantastic. It brings this bike up to a top speed of, I think it's about 22 miles per hour out of the box. You can reach that with the throttle right there on the right hand side of the handlebars, or you can use the cadence sensing pedal assist which is gonna be right down here. You can see those magnets right, uh, right behind that uh, front chain ring there. That's the cadence sensor. Cadence sensors, they measure the rotation of the cranks. So whenever there's movement, it's like, oh, you're going, and it starts the motor. When you stop moving, it stops the motor. Um, comparatively, a torque sensor, it measures the crank, the pressure you're putting on the, on the cranks. Um, so it's a little bit, little bit different how it works. Um, but with the cadence sensor, it's totally fine, but the biggest 
kind of drawback of a cadence sensor is you do get a little bit of a latency from the time that you start and stop pedaling to the time the motor actually activates and deactivates. You, you get that with every cadence sensor. It's not indicative of this bike. It's just, it's just how cadence sensors work. Not really a big deal. You can kind of overcome that if you if you don't like that start and stop delay by just hitting the throttle uh, right when you get going um, and then starting to pedal and then when the, when the cadence sensor kicks on, let go of the throttle because the throttle is live from zero miles per hour. So that's kind of a way you can overcome that if it if it bothers you. Overall though, that's not a big deal. Now with the 22 mile per hour top speed, you can actually unlock this to go I think 28 miles per hour. Uh, I think you have to talk to the company, they'll tell you how to do that if you do want it to unlock it. But top speed technically of this bike unlocked is 28 miles per hour, which is pretty fast. Um, and it, <laughs> because you're kind of lower to the ground, it does, it feels like you're really moving on this bike. It's, it's, it's pretty sweet. Now the battery back here, this is gonna be a Silverfish style battery. That's what these are called. This is gonna be a 48 volt system, 15.9 amp hour battery, huge battery for an estimated max range of about, I don't know, 40, 50 miles, somewhere around there. Max range, this is like a caveat. You know, we, I always wanna say this. It, it just depends on how you ride this thing. 50 miles an hour, you could get that, however, you have to be on a low pedal assist mode. You have to be pedaling. Uh, if you're gonna be using throttle only, you know, full speed ahead all the way, I realistically, you'll probably get 20 miles out of this thing, maybe even a little bit less. It's just kind of how it works. Now this battery right here, because it is in the back and because the motor is in the back, this bike does feel a little back heavy and it is prone to wheelie because it is so powerful. Just kind of keep that in mind. This battery here, it is locking and removable. You've got the key right here. The key is required to make this thing run. So you have to keep the key on or keep the key in and turn it on in order for the electrical system to actually be active. Um, but you can see right here, that little locking mechanism right there, that little silver piece. If you turn the key, that little bolt slides in. You can raise the, uh, the battery up and you can separate it from the bike. So you can charge the battery separately if you do want to, which is pretty sweet. Going back to this side of the bike here, we've got a Shimano Altus derailleur seven speed. Nice little upgraded component compared to the entry level Shimano Tourney. You'll notice this little steel cage right here. It protects the derailleur in case this bike falls over to the right hand side. Small piece, doesn't even cost that much money. It's just a little piece of steel, but it makes a huge difference because I have knocked over bikes without this piece on. And what happens is the derailleur gets all jacked and it gets like smashed and it gets, um, it, it just doesn't shift right. You have to like adjust it to get it to, to, to fix it. And having this just little piece right here is a huge, huge lifesaver. Really almost every bike should, should have that right here. To shift gears, we've got the Shimano SIS Index Thumb Shifter up here on the right hand side. You know, of all the things on this bike right here, I really love this thing. It's, it's not, not a lot to gripe about. This is the one thing I'm gonna single out for this bike. Um, for $18.99 for that price point, I would love to see an actual trigger shifter instead of this SIS Index Thumb Shifter. This is just a bulky kind of component. It can, it's not a big deal, it's just, in order to shift gear, sometimes you have to actually move your entire hand to like do it. It's a small nitpicky point, um, but that's really my only my only critical thing is, is this. This I'm not the biggest fan of the of the SIS index thumb shifters, you know. Other than that, though, I mean this bike is pretty sweet, guys. Also for assembly, super easy to put this thing together, man. Like really, all I have to do is get it out of the box, throw the uh, throw the saddle in attach the handlebars right here. And that's it. Front tires are already on. Brakes are already centered. There's actually air in the tires. Battery was already charged. I mean, you can get this thing out of the box and riding in like five minutes. Very, very cool. Oh, also, you'll notice this has, this has an aluminum bash guard over the front chainring, which is nice. Um, if you do get a strike, that's gonna help protect the actual cheat, the teeth right here from getting damaged. Also, this is gonna help keep the chain from derailing towards the outside. Nice little piece right here, especially since this bike is lower to the ground. And if you do wanna take this thing off-road, because you could take it off-road, it's full suspension, it's got, you know, the tires are pretty beefy, you can handle it. Uh, so having that bash guard there, it, it, it is a good piece of equipment and it's actually pretty important. I'm glad they have that. Over here on this side, we've got beautiful hydraulic disc brakes. I think these are Logan disc brakes. 
Wait, 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 no, wait, what are they? Yeah, this says green bike electric motion. I think they're Logan disc brakes. They might be Tector, I'm not sure what the brand is, but hydraulic, 180 millimeter rotor in the front, and I believe it's 160 in the back. It might be 180 as well. Plenty of stopping power on this bike. Really, really good brakes. Appreciate the stopping power, especially for how fast it goes. You want tons of stopping power on your bikes. I cannot say that enough. You have to have it. Um, you just have to. It's it's safety. It's like, it's like a safety thing. You really need it. Also, because these are hydraulic disc brakes, you can adjust the resting position of the brake lever so you can bring it in or let it out. If you're wearing gloves, if you have bigger hands, smaller hands, you just kind of you can adjust that to your liking. Also, these brakes do have motor inhibitors built in, so whenever you depress the brake levers, it instantly cuts power to the motor, which is another safety feature. So basically, if you're going full speed, slam on the brakes, but you're still pedaling, you still have the throttle on, and it's an emergency stop, it's still going to cut power to the motor, even if you've got that throttle press. Just like a nice little, just in case, just to make sure you have the shortest possible stopping distance, because the last thing you want is an emergency stop where you're fighting against the motor. That would be a terrible, terrible thing. Here in the front, you'll see the wire management is pretty good. It's, it's, it's not bad, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, everything's wrapped up pretty nicely here. You've got this little sleeve on here to kind of just protect it, keep it all bundled up, I like that, that's nice. We've got Mozo suspension here in the front, about 100 and I think 60, 140 millimeters of travel, preload adjust uh, and lockout on these, which is great. Pretty good suspension here, and it does help smooth, uh, not just smooth out the ride, but you can take this off-road on some light trails um, because of the suspension and because of the tires. No jumps, nothing huge on this because there's a folding frame. You don't want it to collapse. You don't want it to break. They're not, they're not going to be as strong as a solid frame electric bike. Um, but yeah, you can take it off-road if you want. It's also got a rear suspension. RE-A5, I'm not sure what this one is. Not a lot of suspension here, about maybe maybe 20, maybe 30 millimeters of travel, maybe. Um, it does a good job of just smoothing out the, the back end of the bike. It's not like, again, not for jumps, but it just makes the ride smoother, kind of more comfortable, more enjoyable for longer rides. That's really the point of this kind of rear suspension right here. Um, and honestly, I like to see rear suspension on, uh, I, I like to see full suspension on folding bikes. Because they are a smaller frame, they tend to vibrate more and having the suspension, it does make it just a more enjoyable ride. Also, I forgot to mention, this frame here, this bike, it's a 6061 aluminum alloy frame, curb weight of about 60 pounds, definitely on the heavy side for a folder. Um, so if you have this thing folded up and you're trying to move it, it's, it's, it's a little heavy to carry around, but that weight is coming from the huge back motor here. Remember, 750 watts, that big 15.9 amp hour battery. That's a big battery. And then front suspension and rear suspension and these big old tires, 20 inch by four inch street tires. Um, these are sweet, man. Uh, just good tire profile. They're, it feels like riding a motorcycle. Um, that's kind of the ride characteristics of it, the way you like lean and stuff. It's very motorcycle feel. Um, good tires here. They have a pretty decent amount of like puncture protection just because of how thick they are. If you are worried about punctures, if you've got a bunch of goat heads, big thorns where you're riding, just throw some goo in there, some slime, whatever. That'll help for, for smaller puncture, stuff like that. But um, yeah, I like these tires. This is a little crooked. There we go. OCD kicking in. <laughs> but yeah, front fenders though, uh, front and rear fenders, steel fenders here. Again, these were already installed uh, when the bike was in the box. So sometimes the fenders and the racks, these can be tricky to install. Um, but again, thankfully this thing came just about like 95% assembled. So you, you don't have to worry about that stuff when you buy it. Also, this does have a rear rack, which is nice for kind of like increased functionality. I mean, really, you can do just about anything with this bike. You can commute with it if you want to. You can go on some light trails if you want to. You can go camping with it, throw it in your RV. Um, just ride around your neighborhood. You can take it to school, whatever. Throw throw your, your backpack on the back here. Um, throw groceries on the back. Like, it's a pretty versatile little folder right here. Really sweet little ride. Also, let me fold it for you real quick so I can show you how to do that. It's a pretty simple operation to fold this. Only takes a few seconds. Set this down right here. Boom. All right. To fold this, it's only a couple of steps here, or I guess one step really. One locking mechanism right here in the middle, undo the latch here, pull it to the side, and then the second safety, you have to pull up, push in and pull up. 
to release the pin. Then you can fold it in half. We're gonna move that kickstand out of the way. Boom, fold, fold, and there you go. That's it. So remember, there's no folding handlebars on this. So to fold it, it only takes a second. Now, the bad part about that is you'll notice that it is still kind of wide because the handlebars do not fold down. So something to keep in mind, if you're really, lim really limited on space, you just want to be cognizant that this is a little bit wider than the average folding electric bike, still a lot smaller than a full-size bike. So to unfold it, super easy, just in reverse. Try to move so you guys can see. Same thing, push this in, raise the pin, slide that over, move it down, deploy the kickstand, boom. Good to go, pretty easy. All right, so now I wanna show you guys the display on this. In order to turn the display on right here, we have an independent button pad right on the left. We're gonna do a long press of the power button right here. Should come to life, yeah, there we go. You'll see on the top here, we have the battery indicator. It's like a 10 bar. So way better than a four or five. Still not as good as a percentage, but pretty good. Current speed, pedal assist level, odometer. If you tap the power button, it'll switch to trip, trip B, how much voltage is left, which is a great way to tell how much battery you have with the voltage. Time ridden, and then back to odometer. Pedal assist levels, it goes from zero. Oh, it doesn't go to zero. So it goes from one, I think it's up to five. Yeah, up to five. Um, it also has this little button right here for the lights. So turn the lights on so you can check that out. Boom, there's the front headlight. This is relatively bright. It's definitely brighter than average. I don't think it's bright enough really to illuminate your path at full speed. It's gonna increase visibility, but if you're gonna ride at night, you might still want a secondary light that's throwing out even more lumens. It has a light in the back as well. Blaze light, just to help increase visibility. Also has a little horn. Go ahead and hit that for you. I actually really like the tone of that. It's not kind of like really squeaky and whiny. It's kind of more like a, like a small truck horn. I don't know. Also good safety feature, if, you let, if you're coming up on somebody and you don't want to scare them, you want to just polite, politely let them know, hey, I'm coming your way, boom, boom, tap that, you know, you're good to go. And then like I was saying, if you do want to get into the settings on this, uh, it's going to be a um, press, hold the up arrow and the down arrow, and you'll see it enters the settings. To change the settings uh, menu, tap the power button, and it'll switch to all the different types. There's just a bunch of different settings here. You have to look at the manual to see what each one does, but there's a lot. To get out of it, long press of the up and down arrow, and it goes back to the regular display there. So that's how you do that. And again, if you do want to unlock the top speed, I think the manufacturer wants you to contact them and they'll kind of tell you how to do it. But yeah, top speed is 28 miles per hour. So look awesome piece. We have covered the green bike, electric motion, big dog, extreme, fat tire folding electric bike. Uh, look, let's take this thing out for a ride. So here we go.
Awesome peeps, that is it for the review of the Green Bikes Electric Motion Big Dog Fat Tire Folding Electric Bike. In summary, again, this thing starts for $1899 USD or $1899 USD. Um, there's a, some cool stuff that comes along with this bike. First and foremost, one of the things that I really like about it is they have a pretty generous warranty. Remember that one year warranty? Very nice for a direct order bike. Just because nothing goes wrong, you got a full year uh, to kind of replace parts. Just gives you a nice kind of warm, cozy feeling when you're dropping a fair amount of money. Because again, this is not, I mean, this is like maybe an affordable bike. This is kind of like the upper tier of affordable. Um, look, we've got the full suspension setup on this. You've got that really huge 15.9 amp hour battery for that you know, pretty long range, maybe around 50 miles or so. The very powerful 750 watt motor, the sweet, sweet tires, there, those, those 20 inch by four inch like street tires, really, really cool. Nice, thick uh, rubber on those. So you're not gonna get punctures or at least you're really, really probably not gonna get punctures. I like to talk about it. if you are worried about that though, just throw some slime in these tires and really I think it's gonna be good to go for like season after season. But this bike right here, the Big Dog Extreme, this is going to excel for people who want something that's kind of versatile because remember this, this, this is a compact frame. You can fold it up, you can stow it just about anywhere, but it rides more like a full size electric bike. So it's gonna be better for, you know, uh, maybe taller riders, for larger riders, just to give you that more that full frame feel. You can commute on this thing, you can take it off road, you can go to the grocery store, you can ride around town. You can really do just about anything with this bike. It's pretty versatile. It's got the rear rack, the full suspension like we're talking about, those, those tires, you can, you can go on trails with them. This is a really versatile bike um, and it looks cool. It feels good when you're riding it, like it's pretty cush. Um, it's just a good all round, like highly versatile bike. And I think that's kind of the, the key selling point here is you can do just about anything with the Big Dog Extreme. So look, if you guys like this bike, drop a like. If you like the review, drop a like. Thank you so much for watching guys. Hope you're having a fantastic day. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. And I hope you're having a great day. Hope you're staying safe out there. Hope you're able to get outside, still social distancing, wearing the gloves, mask if you got all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, <laughs> all right, awesome peeps, that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you guys next time. Peace.